All right, so what we've said previously is that the energy lost by one substance, if we're talking about thermal heat exchange, is going to be equal in magnitude but opposite to the energy gained by the thing that gets heated up. <coughs> or if I take this energy gain over to the other side of the equal sign, adding energy gain to both sides, I could say that energy lost plus the energy gained is equal to zero. And if I want to put that in common sense language, if I put something hot into something cold, I'm not changing the total amount of energy. There's zero net change to the amount of energy in that system. Because one thing lost it and the other thing gained it. They're just trading stuff around. It's like having a poor man and a rich man in a room together. And the rich man, maybe out of a sense of charity, gives money to the poor man. If they're the only two people in the room and the poor man gets 50 bucks and the rich man loses 50 bucks, is there any more money in the room? No. That's all we're saying here. We've got a closed system and the rich guy is going to give up money and the poor guy is going to pick up money. That's all. Zero change in money. Only we're going to apply it to energy, not money. All right, instead of saying E lost and E gained, I want to talk about our iron and our water. And their energies. And we know that if we put iron into water, as we said previously in our diagram, that iron is going to be the loser of energy, if it's hot. And the cold water is going to be the gainer of energy. And so I want to build this idea into this equation. I want to say, instead of saying energy lost and energy gained, I want to make use of this idea that change in energy is equal to mc delta t. Instead of saying energy lost, I'm going to say delta E for iron plus delta E for water is equal to zero. And I could even expand it further. I could use this equation now and I could say the mass of iron times the heat capacity of iron times the delta T for iron plus the mass of water times the heat capacity of water times the delta T for water is equal to zero. If I take one substance that's one temperature and I submerge it into another substance that's another temperature, in this case iron and water. Okay. Now I want to I give an example and then we're going we're gonna to solve it. So here's the example. A 200 gram piece of iron at 350 degrees Celsius is submerged into a 10 degree Celsius bath or just a container of water. that has a mass of 300 grams, grams. <clears throat> and this is going to be our goal. We're going to take this iron and we're going to do it theoretically. We could do it, we could do it in the lab easily. In fact, we may get around to doing this. But theoretically, we could do the calculation up front. Assuming that the system t stays totally closed, assuming we can make a totally closed system, and it's going to be your challenge to try and make it as closed as possible in a laboratory setting. I'm going to give you some styrofoam cups, maybe even some, some tin foil, and you can try and do this sort of thing. Maybe there'll be a little bit of energy loss, maybe some error introduced. But you also have to have some theoretical background, okay? So here's the theoretical background. We want to find, theoretically at least, the final temperature of the closed system. And in saying that, we're saying find T2, that's the final temperature for the iron, and find T2, that's the final temperature, for the water. 
Now here's something that I want you to recognize. If you take a hot spoon and you put it into the water, you left a hot spoon on the stove, and you take that hot spoon and you put it into the water, over time, what tends to be true about the temperature of the water and the hot spoon? Yeah, they get to be the same. So at the end, if this is left long enough, what I want to claim is the final temperature of the iron is equal to the final temperature of the water. And so we're just going to rename it T2. And it just means there's only one variable that we're actually solving for here. It actually simplifies things a fair bit. Okay. Before we get going with the math, I want to write down our givens. So based on this description, I'm looking at what I need to know. The mass of the iron is equal to 200, two, sorry, 200 grams. And I know that that's not good enough. What units should it be in? Kilograms, yeah. So 0 0.2000 kilograms. Remember, MKS units, meters, kilograms, seconds for, si for physics. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. And we said once before that the specific heat capacity for water, sorry, for iron was 4.50 times 10 to the power of 2. And the units were joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And according to the word problem, the initial temperature for the iron is 350 degrees Celsius. We'll take that to be three sig figs. And while we don't know the final temperature, that's actually what we're looking for. So I can't include that in my givens. So the mass of the water is 0 0.3, well, 0, 0, 0 kilograms. I'll just convert it straight to kilograms. Divide by 1,000 from the original 300 grams. And the heat capacity of water is 4.18 times 10 to the power of 3 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And the initial temperature, according to the word problem, is 10 degrees, sorry, 10.0 degrees Celsius. That's what we know so far, okay? And it's going to turn into a little bit of math. So I'm going to pause the recording.